Hello, and welcome to the ProjectWise Administrator Advanced Accreditation Course on Managed Workspaces. This lesson is Product-Specific Implementation Guides. This lesson will present an introduction to product-specific implementation guides. Each product has its own requirements. Some products have additional configuration requirements. Some have additional applications to assist with the configuration. The learning objectives of this lesson are to learn that most guides are based on the standard delivered installation. The installation guides have general installation procedures. Some products do have additional configuration requirements. Each guide is a little different. Each has a little different approach to troubleshooting. Uh, some include best practices, and some applications actually have a separate application for the creation of project-wise projects. We will briefly review five implementation guides. We will look at the MicroStation implementation guide. We will look at open roads, open buildings, pro structures, and open plant. Let's start with MicroStation. MicroStation's implementation guide can be found online at docs.bentley.com. For the MicroStation implementation guide, you actually need to look under the ProjectWise section. Look for ProjectWise Managed Configuration Setup Guide. This is a screenshot from that page. So what's different than what's been presented? The typical implementation guide shows multiple CSBs at various levels. Uh, we will review that in this section. In particular, with the MicroStation implementation guide, this actually goes through how to use logs to diagnose the workspace reload issue rather than needing to use the .good CFG file. I find the .good CFG file uh, works better for me, but you may find that using logs works better for you. The MicroStation Implementation Guide has a best practices section. In the case of MicroStation, this is called Before You Begin. The other implementation guides have best practice sections as well. Each of them is good to review, and you might actually want to take each of the implementation guides, even if it's not your specific product, and read through those to get additional best practice ideas. Let's look at the CSBs that the typical implementation guide. The approach to managed workspaces is very similar in each of the implementation guides. Each uses CSBs at predefined workspace and work set levels. Since all of the guides we will cover follow the same approach, we will only review this in the context of MicroStation. Each is based on the delivered folder structure. You can see the image to the right with the work set located in a child folder of the workspace. Note the location of the configuration route. The predefined CSB establishes the location of the configuration. USTN configuration is set to this root folder. Since this follows the delivered folder structure and redirection of the work set location is not needed, a minimum configuration can be implemented by just setting the workspace and work set names in addition to the configuration location. Let's look at the work set first. We can tell by the icon the work set folder has been upgraded to a project wise project work area. As this is the case, one of the special project-wise variable operators can be used to find this folder and get the name. This operator is the DMS project variable operator. USTN work set name can use 
DMS project to find the folder and combine this with last dir piece to get the name of the folder and thus assign that to work set name. Let's look at the workspace definition. This folder has also been upgraded to a project-wise work area, but not a project-wise project. This approach is probably not practical in a typical production environment because most projects are executed with the project work area outside the workspace. The implementation guides use another special variable operator to find the parent work area because it is in this location. This variable operator is the DMS parent project operator. Similar to the work set name, we can get the workspace name and use the DMS parent project to get the folder, combine it with last dir piece to get the folder name. The implementation guides, in addition to these variables, also suggest making a global variable assigning USTN display all CFG vars to equal one. This is not required for the managed workspace. It only allows hidden variables to be displayed, like the framework variables. The implementation guides then show what it looks like when all of these are applied. Let's continue by looking more specifically at the MicroStation implementation guide. The MicroStation guide has a troubleshooting section. As we noted before, this goes through the workspace reload alert message, only using logs to determine what variables are causing the workspace reload. Let's next look at Open Roads Designer. In this case, the implementation guide is found in Bentley Communities. This is very similar to the MicroStation implementation guide, only it's in PDF format. The next one we want to look at is Open Buildings Designer. The Open Buildings guide is called Open Buildings Deployment Guide and can be found in Bentley Communities. Buildings is a little different in that it has additional configurations required for the application. There are specific requirements for the application portion of Open Buildings, as well as the IFC technology. If you have not created product-specific project-wise applications, the building guide has a section on how to do this. ProStructures also has documentation online. It can be found in docs.bentley.com. OpenPlant is different than all the other applications in that it actually has a separate application that is used to create projects and configure the CSBs. This actually creates CSBs for you creates the folders for you, and applies the CSBs to that folder. Multiple applications can actually use the OpenPlant Project Administrator, but it's primarily used by the plant product users. So what have we learned in this lesson? We've learned that most guides are based on the delivered installation, for example, the work set being under the workspace, they have very general installation procedures, but there are good things to learn in the implementation guides. Some products have additional configuration requirements. Each guide is a little different. They typically have a troubleshooting section, a best practices, and some have additional information like project-wise application creation. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.